Today's class will be about InTouch Window Maker visualization. More specifically today, we'll be discussing Window Maker development environment. And so if you look in front of you, this is the Window Maker development environment. So the Window Maker, Window Maker is, a, is a development environment you, you use to create InTouch HMI applications. You use Window Maker to create the visual interface used by operators to view and manage your manufacturing processes. An InTouch HMI interface shows data from and writes data back to the production environment. So if you look here, we got different aspects here. We got toolbars, we got the menu, we got the different views like project view, classic view, um, which are basically panes. You got your project view pane, you got your classic view pane with a script pane, tool pane. And the last thing I will discuss with this overview is that this area here is your development area where you build your application uh, windows. And moving on, we will be discussing window maker setting preferences. All right. So as you saw, I went from I went to special configure window maker, and additionally, I can go to configure window maker, and I can open it up there. Now, as you can see, um, I have a title bar up here. It says Viz Class 01, and that's what I have here. And I have show application directory checked, right? Which is C visualization class. So I have it in the C under the C drive. Um, under no subfolders, it's its own folder. All right, and as you can see, I have my uh, my grid to two two pixels. Um, oh, and before we go on to that, if you uncheck this and hit apply, you're gonna have to restart Window Maker. And if you do that and it's not checked, this will disappear. All right, so grid configuration is at two two pixels. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to 10. I'm going to say show grid. Okay. And doesn't seem. If we look here. These this definitely looks that looks like it's 10 pixels apart. These dots, this grid. And one thing to highlight is that if I take that, if I go to a range and I'm down to snap the grid and I check it off, it will disappear. So in order to see that, you have to actually check the snap the grid to see this. Um, so there's two things you have to check to have it on. Uh, it would be that and um, the show grid. All right. Now, two pixels, um, though, um, is very, very, uh, it's a lot of resolution. And um, it, it ends up slowing down my, my, uh, my VM that I'm using to run this. So I will actually demonstrate for you. And as you can see, that is quite a lot of pixels, or quite a, quite a lot of uh, dots, I should say, for the grid. And that can create some, it slows it down a little bit. So I prefer not to uh, show it. But I like the two pixels because it, it creates a little better resolution when I'm um, moving things around. Uh, so I can show tag count. And as you see here, I have one tag defined, which is basically what I'm using here with this. Um, and um, the next one is the close on transfer to window viewer. So if I were to go up here and hit runtime on this um, and this fast switch up here, I will uh, basically, if I don't have this on, my uh, window maker will stay open while I look at window viewer. And then if I, um, you know, then I can go back to, uh, development and come back here back and forth. Um, so I guess we can look at that really quick and see what happens. So as you can see here, I'm in development and my register is reading five, which is what I set it to. And um, I'm using a virtual PLC. I'm not using an actual PLC, though I could use a PLC. I have a PLC here to use but I'd rather just use the virtual PLC. So I can show everyone in a future class how to set that up because not everyone can afford a PLC because they can be quite expensive, thousands of dollars, depending on which one. All right. <clears throat> 
so um, we covered that. Let's open the uh, window back up. The setting preferences. So the next thing is pick through hollow objects. Basically, it lets you like click through an object that's hollow to an object behind it. And that way you don't have to send it send, send to the back the front object or move it over to click the object behind it. Um, enable fast switch, that's this thing up here. And I don't really, we're not gonna really mess around with Aviva cloud or web client. We're just more worried about this runtime. So if I were to uncheck that, that would, this would completely disappear. And if you want to go to window viewer, you got to close window maker and open window viewer on the outside, not from within the program. Uh, you got line, line selection precision. So how close do you have to be to the object to click on it? So right now I have, I have it at one. So I have to be at one pixel at within one pixel to click on an object. Um, so I, I have to be pretty precise when I click on it. Um, but you can make it a little bit more loose, so you can be a little bit off from it, where you click it, it will still select it. This one here is your levels of undo. Um, <clears throat> and so what that does is like your, it's like basically if you want to go back like 10 steps, 20 steps, you can. You have the maximum steps you can undo is up to 25. Uh, you can't go any further than that. Um, and then of course the next one we have here is lock window size. And uh, what that does is if you change your resolution, like you take this application, put it on their computer, and, and it changes the resolution. So when, it, when you have resolution changes, it likes to stretch them and, and, and warp your, your objects and all your, your graphics. And what this does is every time you close your application, it restores the project to its original resolution. So you don't have to worry about um, basically messing up your project. So it always returns it back to normal. So in the past, it used to like, when you would do a conversion over to a different resolution, it would warp all your your um, images, all your graphics. So this is a, a nice little thing that they included. And then you have, uh, like, you can configure fonts. So like for like text or for button. And we can look at that. This is like a default. And default for your buttons. And in terms of, uh, Window maker preferences, that's about it. All right, so if you look at this next, we have, I'm gonna cover the ruler. So if I go to my view menu option, I can come down here to ruler, I click on ruler, and it brings up a ruler. Um, so if we were to say, um, I'll leave this up for now. Um, and each one of these, each, each one is like, a <clears throat> Each little dot or like a ruler point. So if it's 50, 51, 52, each one represents a pixel. And um, so that's one way you can tell. And then if you use the grid, you can kind of compare this to the grid. But each one of these definitely represents a pixel on the window. Um, the next next thing we'll cover is padding and zooming. So um, if you look here. I have a uh, 100%, so I can basically come here and I can change this and zoom in. And then I can use the hand. So yeah, holding the left um, mouse button will allow you to drag or around the, the window. Um, all right. So the next, uh, uh, panning and zooming um, option I'm going to show you is this uh, thumbnail. So this brings up this thumbnail and essentially I can edit this thumbnail to zoom in by edit by changing the, 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 the way this box is, the resolution of this box. And I'm kind of making it smaller so I zoom in. If I want to zoom out, I make the box bigger. And essentially it's whatever the box shows is what we're seeing here. And so I can actually pan inside here and I use the box here. I change the size of the box to change my zoom. So this is how I use the thumbnail. And the thumbnail is kind of neat, kind of like it. Uh, it's, I think, the least glitchy out of all of them, or it's the easiest to navigate with because you have an overview of your entire window while you're trying to find what you're looking for. All right, and the last, <coughs> 
excuse me. And the last option is is going to be the wheel, the mouse wheel. So if you hold down control and you can, you know, move your mouse wheel towards you or away from you. So you can see up there my re my um my uh, zoom is changing up on the top, and I'm holding down control and I'm scrolling my mouse wheel. And you know you can also edit here if you really want. Like you can edit what you want to put in there. I didn't mention that. Just type in what what zoom you want to be at. And then the last thing with the mouse is you just have to hold down the mouse button, click it in and hold it down and you can pan that way very basic stuff this is a very basic class but that gives you a general idea how that works so we also have toolbars um, we have these toolbars here they're top now these toolbars can be moved around i can take a toolbar i can bring it here to the bottom I can bring it to the side. It's here on the side now. I can lock it in. I can just let it float if I want. Um, you can also stack it. So now I have layers here. So I have a top layer and a bottom layer. Uh, you can stack it many times. I don't think there's a limit on how far you can stack it, but that will take away from your window view area, make your, making your window smaller. Um, you can disable your uh, toolbars here or re-enable them and what else you have your application explorer window here or panes I should say and you got your project view classic view you got the window scripts pane you got the scripts pane over here in the classic view and the tools pane um, normally it's you'll have your windows up here and um, you like I said you could put your scripts here but I mean for me personally I have my scripts here and the classic view under scripts um, and the tools are all down here and uh, pretty much all these tools should be accessible at your, on your menu at the top so there's really two ways to get to most of your stuff in the in the uh and th for development and the very last thing we're going to discuss is um well not the last thing second to last thing we're going to discuss is the dialog windows dialog box so I'm going to open this. And when you open up your project, this will open up first. This always opens up whenever you open up Window Maker. And you can see that, you know, I got my window here, my only window. And I can open that. I hit OK and it'll open it up. Of course, it's already open. But additionally, if you hit Details, it gives you more information. It, tell, it has the comments here. So when you make this, whoever made this can add comments to the window. Or if you're editing the file, you can add comments to the window. So as to, to give uh, whoever is uh, using this in the future more instructions of what's going on and what it's for, or maybe something to keep in mind. And then, of course, we have uh, the replace. This is type replace, but we have no other option is type pop up, where instead of replacing a window, it will pop up and just be an over, like an overlay. Um, so you get that with the list option as opposed to the details option. So the details is very basic. And also, additionally, if you have lots of windows, say you could have like 200 windows, and it's hard to find something. So you can actually just expand this, make it pretty, pretty, pretty big. And then it might be easier to find what you're looking for by doing that instead of having a small little window and scrolling to find it. All right, the last thing we will discuss is how to move objects with the arrow keys. So what I'll do is I will select uh, my text over here, my text objects. And um, if you were to go ahead and use your arrow keys on your keyboard, every time, every movement is one pixel. Whether you hold or you tap, it's one pixel. If you hold on the shift and then arrow key, it moves it 10 pixels, so it's more. And so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit to, um, all right, so we can see it a little bit nicer. So one pixel, 
10 pixels as opposed to one pixel. So yeah, that's, that's a big difference there. And then if you hold control plus the arrow key, it's 50 pixels. So you can see there it's much faster. It's moving much more um, pixels per iteration. So um, you're going to get a greater uh, movement. Um, but uh, it's not as going to, it's, it's going to be less precise if you're trying to get it somewhere in and get it perfect. So that's why you, you know, move down to the shift or the, uh, or, or just the arrow itself. So that's it for this uh, class on window maker development environment, uh, specifically under visual visualization. Um, stay tuned for the next, uh, next visualization uh, class.